so we're here with Sata Wahab, CEO and founder of Naz Naturals in Liberia, Monrovia. Thank you so much for making the time to meet with us. Thank you too. For uh, I know your journey is so long and it's so tiring. You know, just going around and hearing stories of different entrepreneurs around Africa. I think that's amazing. That's awesome. So thank you. Thank you. We do our best. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, maybe you can tell us a bit about what NAS Naturals is. NAS Naturals is the first um, cosmetic company in Liberia that's producing hair care products for African texture hair. We started in 2016. So my company was founded in 2016. And this was only because I went natural in 2014. And I was in Accra. I cut my hair. And in Accra, it's easier to get natural hair care products because they have like different natural hair care companies. So I came back to Liberia after the Ebola. And then when I came back home, getting natural hair care products, they were super expensive because they were imported from other countries. Most of the products were around 25 to $35. And I was in university at the time and I'm not from, you know, a very rich family or anything. So I did some research and I started mixing my own things for my hair. And so I would go to school and my friends would be like, oh, what are you using in your hair? And I'm like, okay, I did this thing for myself, but I can also, you know, do it for you for free. So I would take the products to my friends on campus and they didn't stop asking. <laughs> So for me, that was like, so what I noticed, one, was the problem. It just wasn't the fact that young women didn't want to go natural. It was just they didn't have access to the right tools and solutions for their natural hair. And two, there was not a lot of education about natural hair up till now. A lot of young women are going natural because they think it's a trend. And for us, what my company is preaching is, okay, you can do it if you think it's a trend and you want to do it, but it's, we're also giving options, like giving, you know, young women that want to stay natural because they want to look beautiful with their natural hair, an option. So for me, imagine me in 2014, coming back home and getting an affordable product for my natural hair, you know? So I thought that was a problem and I decided to like give young women the confidence they need to like inspire, maybe inspire them, empower them in my own way. What were you doing before Naz Naturals? I was actually in Ghana to see my sister and then the Ebola virus thing happened and I couldn't come back home. So I stayed there for like until after the whole Ebola crisis. And actually before then, I was volunteering at different youth organizations. I volunteered at the Paramount Young Women Initiative. So what they do is they work with young women in high school, building them, doing women empowerment programs. And I also volunteered with Smart Library for a very long time, from the very beginning in 2011 up to 2016 when I started my company. And what I did there, um, I helped manage like different projects. So there was this time, there was actually a time when um, schools in Liberia didn't complete the curriculum and students were like halfway because um, education ministry and the government had some kind of issue because of the Ebola crisis. And what they did, they started a vacation program and I coordinated that, I ran that project. Um, they started a vacation program to enable students that didn't complete their curriculum to help them complete it anyways because they were going to sit national exams. And it's not just library, it's like other West African countries. So if you can't complete this, then you're definitely not gonna pass. So we ran that program for like three months. So they went through the program and then they graduated with a certificate. So basically, I've always been interested in young people and especially young librarian women. You've mentioned that before you just went natural in 2014. Uh, what was happening with your hair before that? So in 2014, I think I was like 18, like, okay, okay, I'm an adult now and I'm trying to figure out my life. And for me, it was, um, I was making like major decisions in my life. I was transitioning into something that 
I know I wanted other young women, to, you know, when they see you, they say, oh, okay, this person inspires me to do this. And I wanted to like be 100% confident in myself. So I'm like, okay, if I'm gonna be confident in myself, it also means that that meant for me um, going back to, you know, natural. Because initially, like at a very young age, I relaxed my hair at the age of 10 and I can still remember this because growing up, um, I don't know if you experienced this, but like young, like a lot of African women, you watch Disney, all the princesses, their hair, they have long hair and Rapunzel and Cinderella and Snow White, they all have like, you watch um, like any cartoon or, you know, children movie you see, little black girls hair are very long. So um, I remember like my mom would take me to people to braid my hair because she didn't know how to braid hair. And they would be like, oh, her hair is so thick and it's so, and it's gonna hurt my fingers and stuff like that. And I remember it was actually around Christmas and I was like crying, you have to relax my hair so my hair can be long and I can feel beautiful. So for me, when I turned 18, um, around 18, 19, I'm like, okay, if I want to feel beautiful, beauty for me, it's being natural and, you know, um, expressing yourself however you can. And for me, that included the texture of my hair. Um, I, I'm hearing that a lot, that you have a lot of passion for empowering young women, especially in Liberia. And uh, I read that that's also a mission of NAS Naturals, not only to provide um, affordable hair products for women, but also to make them feel comfortable in their own skin. And I'm just curious, where would you say that comes from for you? Uh, I think it's... Like, like I stated earlier, for me, it, it was like thinking about it. I didn't notice it back then, but I think I was gripped by insecurity at a very young age of 10. And that stayed with me until adulthood. So if I can get, get like other young girls to not go through that and they still want to feel beautiful with their natural hair and educate them that they're okay your natural hair is thick but you also have solutions you have access to the right hair care products for your hair you can feel beautiful and you don't have to feel insecure you've mentioned that you initially when you came back from ghana you started to like mix your own things what was in that stuff that you were putting on your hair so the first time i did so basically i just used shea butter coconut oil and other like natural oils and that was like the first product my company ever came out with um so we call that the dash share moisturizer because so i have a niece her name is dasha and she has like this amazing long natural hair and so when i was transitioning her mom also faced the same problem like getting the right kind of products for her hair so I did that product and her mom used it in her hair and it wasn't like a struggle getting her to like braid her hair for school and stuff like that. So I named the product after her. So it's called Dash um, Shea Moisturizer. And that's like basically shea butter, coconut oil and natural, like natural oils. And that was our first product. That's our signature product. That's the product people know Nas Naturals for. And then in, um, in 2017, I came up with shampoo made from African black soap. So basically I want all my products to be natural so that people don't have to struggle with, you know, the same chemical we're trying to like um, run away from. So I made that from African black soap and then I made um, a smaller um, jar of the moisturizer. So people that can't afford the $5 can afford the $2.50 because we want our product to be accessible to everyone. In 2018, we came out with um, a new hair care line and it's called the Palm Canna Oil Collection. So we have the Coconut Oil Collection and the Palm Canna Oil Collection. The Palm Canna Oil Collection has the African Black Soap Shampoo made with Palm Canna Oil. I don't know if you know about Palm Canna Oil. We have the conditioner. We have the twist butter. You know how you twist your hair, twist out. And we have detanglers. People don't want to wash their hair all the time, but they want their hair to be soft and be able to manage it and come through it or style it. So you can use the detangler for that. 
and then we also have the hair growth oil and the edge treatment. The hair growth oil and the edge treatment came about when a lot of women were complaining about um, tension alopecia, their edges going back. And that's a problem. So I went to South Africa and I had the same complaint. So they're like, okay, if you can figure out something for our edges, you know, because people do braids, people do wigs and removing it, it's a problem. So over time, their edges go back, 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 and it's bald in front. So our edge treatment is made from onions and garlic and other natural ingredients. <laughs> Oh, very interesting. Um, so, how do you how do you manage to scale that? Uh, from okay, you come back, you realize okay, I need product. I make my own stuff. I you sort of start to work it out that you created for your friends, and then your friends keep asking that you decide okay, maybe I need to start a company. So, how did that happen exactly? Like, what was the first step? Uh, when was the moment that you said, okay, now let's do it? And how did that unfold? Um, for me, I think it was just me not thinking, like overthinking it. Because when you overthink, you think about all the right things you have to do. And you're like, okay, I'm scared. I can't do this. So I actually started my company with $100. And I sold the first jars, the first 50 jars I can actually remember. And from there, I sold and, you know, added and so, but um, besides that, I also got a grant from the um, from Sondai Brands through the Smart Library Girls Entrepreneurship and Tech Training Program, and I also got grants from Anzisha Price, and fr um, so the Anzisha Price basically um, get young people from around Africa that's doing like amazing. Um, you go to South Africa, you pitch your business, and some people win. But even if you don't win, they still support you and give you um, grants to help you expand. What does the production look like right now? Because you were doing it by yourself in the beginning, right? But what does the production look like right now? So in the beginning, it was me using my hands. Yeah, doing it with my hands. And then, um, so when I went to South Africa, after pitching, though I didn't win, but I got someone that believed in my business and he said, okay, you know what? You said you needed this mission and I'm gonna buy the mission for you. And I'm like, oh, okay, so people actually believe in what I'm doing. So um, I ordered the mission from China and right now we have um, a actually big mixer that, so at first it would take me like a week to make like 25 products. Right now, I make like 200 products in like an hour. And last month, we sold about 1,000 plus products. So we have a team of two that's working full time and then we have um, our brand ambassadors. What our brand ambassadors do is that they're um, communicating our brand. And so basically our theory of change is, okay, we want to empower young women. How do we do this? At first, you have to educate them about their natural hair. Most young women don't know that most young women don't know that the African texture hair is curly. Um, and then we provide them with the right tools and solution. That's NAS Natural providing them with the products. And then from that, they feel empowered and confident about themselves. That's our end result. So our brand ambassadors are young women that's you know on social media and pushing the message that you can be beautiful with your natural hair. So they get people that, you know, young women coming up that's like interested in going natural and they sell them their products and then on the side we're giving the brand ambassadors commission so it's also an opportunity for young people to earn something while in school while you know in high school in university at the same time and you're also doing something you love you know social media everybody want to be there <laughs> yeah so how do you feel that like before you had NAS Naturals, you mentioned that you were doing some volunteer work uh, with regards to empowering women because that's the passion that you have. How do you feel that that has accelerated with uh, NAS Naturals now? Um, so I feel like 
I believe that, for me, I believe that with my natural hair, I feel confident. And empowering women. So I used to, you know, um, volunteer with these organizations. But I feel like my company right now is having a more direct impact. And I'm being able, so like I said, last month I sold a thousand products. That's about, you know, thousand or 700 or 500 young women lives that I was able to touch in a month. So I feel like I can have, you know, direct impact and be able to communicate with them myself. That's like, for me, that's like the amazing thing about my company being small. That's like the one thing I don't want to lose because I get customers that call me, hey, I saw this picture and I want to go natural. How can you help me? And okay, I want to meet up with you. And that's, for, for me, that's like, okay, I love, I love what I do. You're profitable, right? Yes. That's nice. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you uh, What did you learn in university? What were you studying? Because I know you mentioned that you have finished yeah. now. And um, yeah, what were you studying before my next? So question? I studied um, economics and procurement. Okay. Do you think that that's making a contribution to the work that you're doing now? Not really. <laughs> yeah. The 1,000 products that you sold, were they purely within Liberia or, or are you also selling outside the country? Um, I'm selling purely in Liberia, but I have friends in South Africa. So recently my friend reached out to me and she's like, how can I get your products over here? People are crazy, they want the products. And that's like what I'm trying to figure out. How can I reach out? to other young women in different parts of Africa. Would you say that that's the next step of NAS Naturals? Yes. How to expand. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've met a lot of other people who also have not come from very well-off backgrounds and have started uh, enterprises and have needed perhaps more uh, funding and have had like crazier challenges. But for me, it seems like your process was fairly simple. Am I wrong in assuming that? Or what challenges did you face? Um, I, don't, I don't think it was very simple. The fact that one, I was really young when I started, 18, 19. And secondly, um, I was a woman, like young woman. And right now it's like, okay, you wanna go natural in Liberia, people, that's natural. But before we got that, I went to like different supermarkets. I went to like different stores. I went to like different places and they were like, no we can't sell your products, no, we can't sell your products, no. And I got that for a very long time. And it took me back to my drawing board. It's like, okay, this is the product, this is the problem I have. Because in Liberia, I don't know if it's like that in other African countries, but people have preference for like imported products than products that are being made locally. So for me, what I decided to do then was to reach my customers directly. and. That included a major social media campaign, like pushing my products through social media. And that was how we were able to get our social, um, social media ambassadors. So um, that's one. And another way we usually sell our product is we host an annual event. My company, we host a, an annual event for young women with natural hair and it's called the Afro Girl Fest, um, Afro Girl Festival. Bring together young women that wanna go natural, young women that are natural and um, even like skincare products, young black women that are interested in knowing how they can you know, manage their skin and hair naturally. And we have people share their stories with them. How did you go natural? How did you overcome this challenge? And so on and so, so forth. We also invite like, we also have like different young entrepreneurs selling their products. So it's like people are vending, um, people are learning about their natural hair and it's like an awesome experience. So people come, they want to learn about their natural hair, they want to learn about the product as well. And so, yeah, I wouldn't say it was quite easy because, yeah, it took me, like I said, it was just this year that my company, you know, we were able to reach as much young women as we're reaching now. It took me like two years 
to get to where I am right now. It took me accepting a lot of no's that you can tell your brother's here. We don't have librarians coming in this store, so you can tell your brother's here. Well, uh, now I feel silly <laughs> for asking that question, but um, thank you for that clarification. Do you have uh, a factory, offices, uh, or how do you, wh where do you do the production from? So, do you have a store or is everything online? So yeah, everything is online and I usually work from Smile Library Working Space. Um, they have a store as well for their fellows and made in library products. So they sell my products in the store and um, we now have a website. People reach out through social media. So we have Facebook store as well. And we have, so my friend actually owned a natural hair care salon and she sells the product as well. And she's also using the products on her customers. And we have another salon um, in the Painsville side, they sell the product as well. That's like our major sales point. But basically, um, the most point we get like more traffic is through direct sales. What does your logistics look like? I mean, I have been very fortunate to get my products delivered by the CEO, but <laughs> but how do you um, do deliveries? So we actually outsource our delivery to like a delivery company. So they have like different delivery companies. Once you order your product, we call them and they deliver to you. Oh, that's uh, nice and tidy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you've obviously mentioned that there are there were a lot of challenges that you went through, just like being a woman. Uh, like you had also some personal, uh, like like you were transitioning yourself to this woman that you wanted to become and just knocking on doors and people saying no to you. What kept you going? Um, for me, it was my why. Why I started doing what I started doing. I started doing this because I wanted to empower young women. And at that time they had um, no natural hair care company in Liberia. If I don't do this, I don't know who's going to do it. So I have to do it. I have to be the one to make this change for young women in Liberia. And that was it for me. How have you been able to keep things uh, so affordable, like the product? So, um... So um, most of my raw materials are sourced from Accra um, in our packaging, so they're sourced from Accra. So um, a major like cost has to do with shipment and paying taxes and you know everything in between there. But as it relates to like the kind of the materials you need, um, the raw materials. If we could get like our products in duty free, or oh, those would have been like way cheaper than what customers are actually getting right now. And that's one. Another thing is just that for me, it's about giving young women the chance. So it's not like I'm gonna capitalize on this thing and get rich in a day. I don't want to get rich in a day. I want young women to experience their natural hair and feel beautiful and feel empowered and feel confident. Thank you for sharing all of that. I find it very inspiring, although I'm not a young woman with natural <laughs> hair. Um, what's really blowing my mind is that you sat down and said, OK, I want to be confident about myself. And here's where I'm unconfident. So let me simply change it and, and stand in that space. How, how did that come? How did you, how did you make that conscious decision that you wanted to be that person. Do you know? Hmm. I think, um, okay, so earlier I said I was like 18, 19, I was, for me that year was, a, my major goal was like a lot of personal growth, you know? Um, so I tried to do this every year. I set like goals, what I want to achieve and then um, see how best I can push for these goals and for that year, it was like just um, being 
like helping myself become a way better person and how do I become way better um, maybe I need to be in power maybe I need to be confident and I started like so it wasn't like at the very beginning I wanted okay so I decided on this thing at that point I wanted to be confident and I felt like okay I've had this struggle with my natural hair for a very long time and okay I think maybe if I can find a solution to this problem then it will help me you know feel a little bit better about myself and that was just it that's a very good very good strategy how did you come across goal setting and you know the desire to work on yourself and how you show up in the world uh, as a young librarian i'm so curious <laughs> to really so i think it's from you know interacting with people from different places and so i mentioned earlier i was in ghana i actually went to primary school in ghana and it's like okay so people like to say that when you travel you have a lot of exposure and that's for me that's like that's for sure because um i i like to talk to people i don't like small talks i like to talk to people that you know inspire me and help me grow um so another thing is i have a really wonderful mentor and she's like She's like, I think I'm pen to paper, but she's like pen to paper. And she's like, you tell me this thing, I write it down. So she's like, every time you want to achieve something, write it down. Every time you want to achieve something, write it down. Because when you read it over and over, you believe in it. And then once you believe in anything, you can do it. Who is that mentor and how did you meet her? Um, so my mentor is um, Monique Liverpool. She has... So she's basically into environmental um, studies. And so, so she has her own company. It's called um, Pesta Liberia. And um, I met her through Smile Liberia, actually. So she's also the um, chairman of the board, the board of directors. So she's the chairman, chair lady of the board there. And yeah, so they were doing a mentor, mentee pairing program. And yeah, that was it. <laughs> I think that's very powerful, you know, and um, it's very cool to hear that this works out because in many mentor programs, unless you develop this personal, exp you know, uh, friendship or relationship, the mentoring never sinks in. But in yeah. your case, it really <laughs> stuck. That's wonderful. You know, you mentioned that you had to knock on a lot of doors to get the word out about your company. Can you describe how you approached the shops or, you know, how you try to build your distribution channel? How do, I'm just imagining, okay, you wake up one morning, you maybe still go to school uh, and you say, okay, let me build my distribution channel. How did you do that exactly? Okay, so um, at first I was basically just selling on campus. I talked about, you know, how I started selling to my friends. And... Um, the, you know, word of mouth. I wasn't on social media. I wasn't doing any major marketing. And people who call me, uh, okay, I use this product from this person and I want a product, where can I get it? They can get it anyway. <laughs> you have to come to me. So I'm like, okay, sat down and decided that I would reach out to like supermarkets and stores. So I reached out to like few supermarkets, like most of the supermarkets between Sinker and Central Town. And they all said, we don't have a lot of library and traffic in our supermarket. People that come here, they're like experts. And I'm like, okay, no problem. So they can put my product on their, shelf, on their shelf. Um, so from there, I went to a lot of local cosmetic stores. With the local cosmetic stores, they, it was more of, okay, she's young. Like, most of them didn't even know I owned the company. I remember particularly, there was this guy, I went to the store, and I'm like, okay, so, you know, after selling, go for the money. And I'm talking to him, and he's like, you need to call the owner of the company to come. 
<laughs> and he knows that you're the owner of the company? Apparently like, he didn't know and he wasn't even thinking about it. And I'm like, but you can, okay, I don't want to say I'm the owner, I want to be humble. But you can talk to me, like, just respect. Even if I'm not the owner, I'm from the company and I'm a representing company. Just talk to me. I can talk to you, go and bring the owner. Okay, I'm the owner of the company, what can you say? <laughs> <laughs> and how did he react? <laughs> And he was like, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm the owner of the company. And okay, what problem do you have? How can I help you? What do you need? Um, do you need me to bring more products? And he's like, okay, I need you to bring more products and you can come for your money in this, on this date. And I'm like, okay. Okay, so but in the end it became a partnership? Yeah. Okay, very nice. Wow. Yeah, and that was like, that was awesome for me because I had like a few local cosmetic stores, like in Central Town, that's like an entire street where they have local cosmetic stores and most of their products they sell anyway are like imported products from different countries. So of like two, two accepted the products. So it was easier because most people come to Central Town every day. So it was easier for people to access the product through through that. Uh, have other people, uh, you know, looked at your company and said, okay, I want to start something similar? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so different businesses are now popping up around natural hair. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, so you're actually driving the impact and driving up the competition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Very powerful. What did your family and friends, close friends say when you said, okay, I'm going to start this business. I'm going to do that now. So, um, I was raised by a single mother and my mom didn't go to school or so she's uneducated and like ever since I remember ever since I was a little girl, I just needed, needed to tell her what I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. And go help her. I've always been a good girl. <laughs> Like I always wanted to do the right things. And so I told her that I was starting the company and she actually used to help me. She, so when I'm going to school, she will go to the market to get whatever raw materials we need and she bring it home so that by the time I get home, then we can make the products together. And yeah, my friends, I think I actually inspired some of my friends actually to like <coughs> go natural one and also so my friend that I talk about that has the natural hair care salon, um, she started helping me as well. And then over time, I'm like, you know, people now have the products. Some people don't know how to do their natural hair. So this, this is also an opportunity for you to venture in. So now she too is also into the natural hair care business. Is there anything that you would, you know, you wish you had known five years ago that you know now? Um, hmm. I don't think so because I believe that everything I went through as a person is the reason why I'm here today sharing my story. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> How could I forget that? <laughs> What's your, what are your next steps? What are your next plans for the near future? As a person or for the company? Yeah, as a person. So I want to go back to school. I want to um, get a degree in entrepreneurship and um, I want to grow Nas Naturals to reach out to people outside of Liberia. And I want to start my second business. Oh, what, what is that going to be? Hopefully in agriculture. Why agriculture? Because in Liberia, I don't know if you noticed, have you gone to the supermarkets? You've been to the supermarkets? Yeah. They don't have, like in other countries you go, you see a lot of vegetables, a lot of, in Liberia, um, we import pepper, like pepper, and we eat a lot of pepper anyways. We import pepper, um, rice is our stable food, and it's like, we import rice as well. And it's not because maybe our soil can grow these things. It's because um, maybe the people in the rural so what i want to do is to create a link between the rural areas and um the urban like the city Monrovia, where people buy the things so i want to um get local farmers in like local farmers in the rural area to like 
be able to sell their products to people directly to the civil markets. So they too, because people in the rural areas, they're farming, but on a very small scale, because they can reach the right amount of people that they need to. And people in the city need like food, you know? So I feel like it's gonna help grow the economy one. So if we could, they, are, they already have a rice producing company here, but other farmers in um, the rural areas need to get their products in the city. So they to their family, they can be able to afford for their family. And then we can have supermarkets stop selling vegetables and fruits at crazy expensive rates. And you already have experience in directly getting to the end customer, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that will be helpful. So, so what, what will you need to start this new venture of yours? Hmm. Um, I think fun. Because that's like like funding. That's like um, this is not as natural that you can start with hundred dollars. <laughs> you need to go to the rural areas, and I want to be able to um, just besides that. So usually in Liberia, unlike other countries where you see people go to the market and they buy their food and things and keep it in the fridge, um, we don't have good electricity here, so people go to the market every day. The markets, people don't, I don't like to go to the market because it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like a lot going around, like people going crazy. And I feel like that's one place that a lot of money go through in the local markets. People go to the markets every day. But still, you have people selling on market tables for like, 15 years, 20 years, and they can't get beyond that. Like they can't expand to anything else. Um, one could be the fact that you don't have, um, you know, simple financial programs that teach people, uneducated people, how to manage their income and how to manage their expenses. People sell in the market. My mom is an uneducated woman. I know what she went through. So I want to change that scenario and make sure that I'm able to, like, so if I can connect the farmers to the supermarket, I can also connect them to the market. And the women in the market, when they sell their products, they're able to get something for they and their family so that time to come, they can move up to something different. Wow, very much looking forward <laughs> to hearing more about this new venture. Hopefully, upcoming soon. Coming, <laughs> coming soon. <laughs> coming soon. I have one more question regarding your brand ambassadors because I find it a very smart way to build your business, to keep your costs low, to reach more people, and you know to also have the credibility and the trust of people that are actually buying it. How do you find these brand ambassadors? So um, at first, I would just like inbox people, like someone I see that's using, like someone I know that's using the product, and they're like, especially people that give good reviews, and they will accept. But right now, what I do is I open like a short application process. People apply. You tell us what, and it's amazing because young women are actually. I was shocked, like. Just between the time I launched, so right now we currently have 10, um, between three months, like I've gotten up to 25 requests. You know, can I be a brand ambassador? Can I be a brand ambassador? And for me, that's like super amazing. So how do we, you know, open the program for other young women? Because, okay, you're getting your natural hair shown out there, you're inspiring people, but at the same time, you're getting, you know, commission and something for yourself as maybe a college student or a high school student. And then you train them on how to represent your yeah. brand. Yeah, so um, they go through two days training. So we do, most people don't know how to use like basic apps and things um, for social media. Social media, people just post and that's it. Like they don't know how to, they don't know the benefits of hashtagging, you know, boosting the post and stuff like that. So um, they go through two days training. Um, I teach them like basic marketing, how to interact with customers, you know, how to talk to customers when they reach out to you and how to create your own content, maybe using Canva or you know, um, even if you take your picture, how do you post it in a way that people are interested in that content? Um, and then how to communicate our brand 
as NAS Naturals, like what can you do and what can't you do as a brand ambassador? What would be your advice to young librarians today? <sighs> so I would say be hard working. Nothing beats um, getting your 10,000 hours <laughs> in there. Um, read more so that you have ideas, like you'll be able to grow personally. Um, network, reach out to people when you need help. And most importantly, just be compassionate and figure out what you as a person is passionate about and how you can make change um, in that field or that area of, of the lives of different people. Wow, I'm very impressed. <laughs> I wish you all the very best. Thank I'm you. I'm looking forward to seeing you even on the international map. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, hopefully soon.